in CitizenServe. Um, we, we would go to search for an address or, or search for a property here. And we can put in uh, either street number, street name, property owner name, parcel number, uh, any one of those searches. I, I put in a couple examples in here. So, so this database of properties, usually we'll get like a, you know, a, either a one-time load and then you um, just update them as you go. Or a lot of times we'll get an uh, you know, automate, automated update or a monthly update. Uh, of this property data, but I, I manually entered in two, so we can search Elm and see both of those addresses show up. And I just made up a parcel number. I don't know your parcel numbers, um, so we can see here's two properties found. And if I wanted to kind of dig deeper into this bottom one, I can click on the parcel number there, and it pulls up my parcel or property file where I can see. You know the parcel address, the owner's information, um, latitude and longitude. If we had that, and then Joe had uh, given me these fields to add as additional property data that we can update and store on this address, and then use that, you know, going forward on files and being able to reference that in reports to edit this property information. Maybe add a property class or subdivision. We can go over here to edit property in the blue column and then edit this information, replace the property owner's name, uh, put in latitude, longitude, put in any, any of these fields, and we can even add more to this screen. So okay. you would edit so it from this file. Just wanted to add on, when, let's say you had a, a building permit that came in four years ago, that permit is going to have a copy of the parcel data at that point in time. So it has a history through the permits and tickets and code violations that were existing on that property. So if you pull up a ticket from four years ago, it's going to show you who the owner was four years ago, not who the owner is today. So this shows the current, what is it now, but on those different tabs, you can see, well, what's been going on on this property and drill down into those files to see, well, who was the owner at this point in time. All right, can you guys see my screen okay? Yes. yes. All right, so I'm just going to go into an address um, and pull up this parcel. So what they have is they have a status to track each property. So property is either active or inactive. And then if it's active, it won't have a parent parcel because it is essentially the parent. But it may have child parcels. So if I look at this one, I can see that this parcel has one, two, three different child parcels or other parcels that are related to it. So it might have done a split, it might have done, you know, who knows what happened, that it somehow has these other parcels that are related to it. So we created a report so that they can um, find the related parcels. So I'm just going to copy this and click this find related parcels. We'll put that parcel number in and search. And so it finds, OK, here's the main parcel, and then here's those three related. So you can see, OK, well, what was the information for those? Those three are inactive. Here's the address. So if the owner was different, you could see that. You'll, you know, so you can see all of those related parcels in one place. And you can drill down to those if you wanted to. We also added an option. Call, I'm sorry, go ahead. Even though we call this a report, I mean, as you can see, you can drill down on each one of those there. So it's really kind of a quote unquote, a custom screen the report because it's all in a browser? Yeah. I mean, we could put a link here, like this finder. This is a custom field. So when you were looking at Dan's, you didn't see this because he doesn't have that field set up for that installation. But for this one, we do. So we could add a link here that is, you know, combine parcel or split a parcel. We would just need to work with you to define, well, how is that going to work? When we say we want to split this, are we going to create a new parcel number, same number with a letter at the end, or do you want to type in a number? What information gets copied over in that split? You know, we would have to define those rules. But then you could just click the link, it would create it, and then you could go in and modify it and add additional information. And the one thing I also wanted to mention is that it's a security setting who can edit these properties. So you mentioned that. Um, your finance is in charge of taking care of the ownership and um, inspections, I think you said, our community development assigns the addresses. So you can set that up in the system so that only users or certain users in those departments have that ability. And everyone else is just looking it up. They can't come in and edit the property and change things about it. 
So can you go ahead and just kind of go down through the custom fields there and just show them the extent to what these guys have done and how it's organized? Sure. So this is Somerville, Mass, and they've got a lot of parcel-related data. So they're tracking. This is the main information. Is it active? Parcel number, map lot block, that kind of thing. Um, but then they're also tracking, is it in a historical area? What's the building number, rooms, occupancy? I mean, they just they have lots of data that they track. So again, this is all custom. So you can add or remove these things. And when you create a file, so let's say someone comes in and applies for a permit, maybe permitting is interested in you know, the zoning and the acres, but they don't really care if it's a rental or vacant. You could have different information pull into those licenses or permits or code based on what that department needs. So the property data here kind of contains everything. But within your individual departments, you can say this is what's important to us. They can still come see everything, but they don't have to see it all. Like if I pull up, um, I want to go back to that main parcel, because I know it has a file on it. If I pull up, let's see what permits we have on here. If I pull up this electrical permit, on the history tab, they copied in most of the information. But if they, you know, let's say, you know, they decided they don't want to see this every single time, they could take that off, but they could still get to it by going to the parcel itself. We'll let you create something that's not on an address. Sometimes that'll happen. Let's say um, there are legal signs posted on a corner, and there's no, you know, parcel number for the, the intersection of this and that. So you can put in something that isn't a valid address. However, on the portal side of things, when you're letting people apply for permits, you can restrict that so that they have to select a valid address if you want to. But when you search, it just search and it'll find the matching property. So this is always going to show me the most current. This is pulling from the parcel database. But then it'll also say, hey, we've got some different ownership. So if you wanted to look at history of what's been going on before, you can click here to see those. And if you select that address, then it pulls in everything current that we know about that address. And you can also put an alert on the address. So um, let's just jump back over to my property file. Um, you can add alerts to addresses. And if you add them, it shows up here. So if anyone creates a file on it, they'll see the alert. Maybe if you've got a lien on a property, that's a good thing to put an alert so that people don't do construction. You can put conditions on that too. So if they say, hey, there's a lien, then we have a condition that says no issuing permits on this property until the lien's taken care of. So the property data really is the, the center point of the system, and you can control what updates it. And we, there's two ways to go with it. Frequently, the cities and municipalities that we work with they look to the county as the, you know, the record holder for who owns the property, who's on the deed. So we import that data from there. And so they're really just doing a refresh of that data all the time. If, since you're the owner of that information, then you wouldn't be doing that refresh. As Buddy mentioned, as Dan mentioned, we would do a one-time import, and then you would modify the data through, through CitizenServe. Or if you wanted to retain New World for that, you would retain New World for the part land information, and you could send that export to us, and we would import CitizenServe with that information. So there's lots of different ways you can go to it, just depending on what makes the most sense for what you need. Oh, and I also wanted to show you the, um, the layers. I don't know if you guys have looked at that at all, um, but your different GIS layers. So let's say I wanted to look at the parcels. Um, It'll just you know draw those lines. So all your layers, you can load as many as you want. If I want to look at the zoning districts, you know I can take a look at that. So that's how your layers come into play, and you can split them up. So if you've got a lot, and maybe you want to load all of them, but you've got five that everybody uses all the time, you know you can throw those in at the top, and you can hide your other ones down here in case someone needs it. They can still get to it, but they don't have to you know sort through it to find what they're looking for. This in particular isn't a direct integration um, because their layers don't change very often. We just load the layers periodically when they send them. We do have others that it is a direct integration and it goes directly to the GIS system. It just depends on you know what works best for you. You can go either way. And the the base here is Google, so you you get kind of all the Google options. 
um, you know, you can do satellite, and you can street view, and all that stuff that comes with Google.